we're now in the height of summer. It's a bit rainy today, it's been quite wet. This is an area with lots of oak trees, grass and moss. I'm going to show you some, uh, some lovely fungi. What I like the most about these warm, wet summer months is the profusion of fungi that, that, that you might find. And one of the earliest uh, genre that appears around these summer months is the genus Rushula. And here we have a beautiful uh, member of that genus. This is a species called Rushula atropurpurea. It's called the, the purple black Rushula, the common name. And you see there, lovely purple color. We've often got yellow blotches on it. It has white gills on the underside and a white stalk. Quite crumbly, the Rushula family are, um, are known as the brittle caps um, because they, they actually break quite easily because of their cellular makeup. This is a mycorrhizal genus and this particular species will be associating with the nearby oak trees. Here we have some more of the Lactarius species. This is the oak milk cap, Lactarius quietus. You can see there why it's called Lactarius because you can see it's lactating from the gills. Um, it has this concentric rings um, around the um, around the cap and this sort of buff pink color. The stem is often got a kind of brownish and then a sort of reddish purple base to it. Um, this will also be associating with the oak tree, that's why it's called the oak milk cap of course. It's supposed to smell of bed bugs but I've, I haven't got a clue what bed bugs smell like. Um, I've just got some milk on my nose. Um, with the Lactarius, um, some, often the milk can be quite acrid or hot and this is a mild to very 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 slightly acrid taste. Um, it is edible but not worthwhile. That's Lactarius quietus, the oat milk cat. This is another um, one of the crab brittle gills. This is a uh, Rushula graviolens. Here it looks a kind of more more orangey um, beige colour. I might pull this one out actually and have a look. I'm trying not, I try not to snap it off, I try to get the whole thing out of the ground actually, so that you can, um, here you go. But still has that kind of, um, that kind of reddish, washed out, orangey red, brown colour going on for Rush to the um, Graviolans. I can smell the crab. I can smell the crab on it. Again, it'll be associating with the oak tree behind us. But as a, this is a complex, like I said, it's a complex of mushrooms based around another species called Rusula zerempolina, which, which is more of a, a pine associate um, and is often really bright, um, really, really dark red, dark bright red color. Um, but it has the same smell of crabs, like this, really strong, um, but associates with pine. Okay, to make a change from Rushula, we have a different genus, often occurring quite early in these warm, wet summer months, and that's the genus Amanita. And this is Amanita rubescens, the blusher. It can get quite big. This has obviously been around a little while, and you know they get, get to this size even bigger than this. And you can see why it's called rubescence because you can see this lovely sort of reddish orange hue to some of the fruit bodies here. It has these scales on the top which are sort of left over from a universal veil that covers the whole mushroom when it's young. On the underside, we'll move, pick this one up. On the underside, you see it's got white gills. You see there, look, look how it's reddening on the, on the gills from where it's being bruised, hence the name Rubescence. Also it has a little bit of a ring on the underside which is from a partial veil and down the bottom it has a swollen base which is also part what's remnants of, of the universal veil and a turnip shape towards the bottom there which are very distinctive of the blusher. It can be confused sometimes with people that don't know the difference between their mushrooms which is quite often 
um, with Amanita Pantherina, but that has very, very white uh, scales on the top, and it has like a, a little sock that the, um, the, the, the stem sits in, a much more of a wider rim at the base. But this is the blusher, Amanita rubescens. And yet another rushula. There are a plethora of um, species of rushula in this just short stretch along here. We're very lucky today in that, uh, that somebody hasn't come along with a grass cutter and taken them all away because that tends to happen around here. But we're very lucky, we're spot on with the timing. The mushrooms have come up and no one has cut the grass. So here we are, another rushula. Now, this can cause quite a bit of confusion because there are some very similar species um, and they're really quite difficult in the field. There's no, no uh, problems with um, poison, toxicity with these species of Rushula. All of them are mild, all of them are pretty edible, but when it, when, when it comes to sort of trying to pin down exactly which species it is, this can be quite difficult in the field. Um, this is Rushula grizzia um, and it's quite variable. It starts off quite dark like this. Uh, often with purple tints, you can see in this little one here, it has this uh, lovely purple coloration around the, around the margin, often that bleeds into the edges of the gills as well. And over here we have some, we have some more mature specimens where it's started to fade. Now the only way to tell the difference between this and, I, and another species, Rushula ionochlora, is you need to get the, the cap skin under the microscope in a solution so that you can see what kind of cells it has. Um, that's only for the expert, mind you, um, and um, it, for me it's always nice to know what you're looking at, what you're dealing with, um, which species, and this one can cause a little bit of confusion and frustration, even to those in the know.